The following CBC special presentation is available with described video. The following program contains course language. Viewer discretion is advised. But perhaps you could show some respect and act on it. Apologies, Father. Guys, relax. One size fits all. Hey, don't call me that! America's Canadian sweetheart, Samantha B, and welcome to the 11th Annual Canadian Screen Awards. I'm coming to you on tape on April 16th from beautiful downtown Toronto, home of that big, tall tower thing. There it is. Having lived in New York for more than 20 years, it feels great to be back in my hometown, Toronto City, T to the Ronto, home of... Bags of milk, the Kinder Eggs with toys in them, and the R.C. Harris Water Treatment Plant. Too many things to list. One thing I know for sure, Torontonians are all abuzz for beef. Watch those leaves tonight, eh? <laughs> Sorry, but you're not getting an apology from me today, fellow Canadian. Go Leafs, go. Go Leafs, go. Go Leafs, go. Go Leafs. Oh. And one more note for our American friends who come up to Canada and shoot in our amazing cities as a stand-in for New York. We notice. You're really not trying very hard. You never see a Canadian try to do that. Tonight, we are definitely in Canada, and we are definitely celebrating the best of Canadian film and TV. We're like the Oscars and the Emmys combined, but 16 hours shorter because celebrating is great, but you know, we've got to do. Mm. Oh. Boy, I forgot how bad clam juice tastes. You like seafood juice, right, girl from Turning Red? Tonight, we'll be honoring, honoring with a U, that is, outstanding homegrown Canadian performers, writers, animators, directors, and maybe a few other people who I wish were my best friends. Tonight's nominees represent the breadth of Canadian storytelling, from poignant comedies to gripping dramas to little-known corners of Canadian culture, like hockey. Stories that feature complex yet relatable characters like a hard-nosed detective, a Syrian refugee medical resident, and that dildo lady on that sex show. So sit back, relax, and celebrate the best of Canadian media with me and some of my favorite Canadian stereotypes, young and old. Because no one ever tires of seeing a Canadian Mountie drinking a double-double. Think it's time to retire that cliche, right, Gord? As we get set to hand out our first award, the Academy Icon Award presented by CBC, I have a terrible feeling that we didn't do something. I can't help but think we've forgotten to honor someone, like someone of note, someone of legendary status, someone so big it's embarrassing we haven't. John Candy, Eugene Levy, Martin Short, no, we got all of them. Who else could we have forgotten? Catherine! I could never forget you, St. Catherine. My comedy hero, that is, not the town. Catherine's career has been truly iconic. She's both impersonated Meryl Streep in an SCTV sketch and starred with Meryl Streep in a dramatic film. She's created dozens of characters and made them all uniquely hilarious. I literally wouldn't be a performer if it wasn't for her. So it is a complete honor to introduce my comedy North Star, my icon and yours, Catherine O'Hara. Stay 
at least once a day, I enjoy a good, strong, hot cup of Twilling's tea. Do we set the timers on the lights? Mm-hmm. What else could we be forgetting? Kevin! They're dead. It's a little late to be neurotic. It is a gift that we all have to be able to laugh. It just gets you outside of your head. You'll soon learn that we aging mortals are blessed with weakening eyes and memories so that we don't have to really see ourselves. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Amy. It's great to see you, and I'm thrilled to be talking to you for the Canadian Screen Awards, the Icon Award. Congratulations. I'm so sorry. Uh, because you're Canadian, I know uh -huh. you're not going to want to talk about being an icon. But you are an icon. You're an icon to many. You're an icon to me. <laughs> Sorry, I hate to say it. I know this is hard for a Canadian to take. And vice versa. Thank you. I'm American, so I can. I have no problem taking that in. But Canadian, <laughs> Canadian's a little different. You've been in the business for a while. You've had this tremendous career. And you get to do a lot of different things. And I yeah. think that, from what I've learned, having the privilege of getting to know you is, for you, the people you get to do it with is very important. Yes, and I'm so lucky I still get to work with some of the people that I worked with when I, you know, my first job in yeah. show business, yeah, Second City. Yeah, well, Eugene, still working with Eugene. Why is it important? Why does it matter to you? Because I'm scared of everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want people thinking I'm reading some other woman's love letters. Well, it'll give you an edge. No one will ever accuse you of being vanilla again. You talk about Eugene. I love watching you two work. I'm sure you've told this story before, but for people who don't know, how did you two first meet? That's what I always Godspell. Wanted. He was in Godspell with uh, Marty. Yeah. Short. And uh, Gilda Radner, God bless her, who at the time was my brother Marcus's girlfriend. Yeah. But you know, everybody tried dating everybody because there's nothing sexier than making each other laugh. Yeah. Seeing someone up on stage, forget it. So you're sharing laughs and and it's sexy so everybody tried dating each other eugene and i tried once or twice it didn't work out thank goodness because i don't think we would have the working relationship we have now yeah did you try dating people on i did upright? i tried dating everybody yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay i have a i have a question about oh, no, your you past don't. but i do <laughs> i have a question about your past and the authorities mm. would like some answers okay do you come from a fam funny family yes i do so how did you guys like laugh and joke around because i do think that that's Oh. People learn comedy from their family. Absolutely. It's either encouraged in your life or it's beaten out of you. Yeah. I think, yeah. And yeah. my parents were really funny. They were, I think that was what made them sexy for each other right to the very end. Yeah. Was they would always be able to make each other laugh no matter what they were going through. I mean, at the end, there was sickness. And they'd always find a way to, to make it funny when they told us about it. As an observer and yeah. a huge fan of, like, most of my heroes are Canadian sense of humor about yourself absolutely is so so specifically Canadian. and healthy is it cool to have characters that you've done become halloween costumes yes it is isn't yeah. it yeah, yeah. yeah i'm sure you yeah. Did it. yeah i mean yeah. when you see people funny? dress up like yeah, whole families do the, the rose family from chick yeah. <laughs> i know it's a great halloween. costume so when you meet people that you don't know <laughs> Yeah. I'm fooled all the time. I think I know them because of the way they talk to me. Yeah. They're so familiar and open that they, oh, I'm forgetting. I can't remember. And they've been watching you. They've been in their house watching you. And yeah. now a lot of people are kind of in bed with a computer oh watching my Lord, you yeah. with their headphones. I mean, you've been right there. As an icon, how will this change you, I guess? How will this award change you? I'm already uh, looking around. <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't even do, I couldn't even do the joke I wanted to do. It was like, I was going to go all arrogant. And I couldn't do it. I know. Uh, yeah. I'm going to get another award. And that will need a place in my home. Mm -hmm. And we're renovating now, just so there will be a room for that. Every award that you get, you're going to create a room for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's smart. Don't you have that? This is why we do the work. <laughs> so this is the Canadian Screen Award Icon Award. Oh, Amy. And it also can hold your um, paper towels. Yes, please. And it looks like it's uh, an angel, or uh, what do you think it looks like here? It looks like someone ready to hug you. Yes. And give you all the love that you don't even deserve. 
but it's gonna give it to you anyway. And it can also kill a person if you hit someone with it. I mean, feel it, it's got a lot of heft to it. Wow. Yeah, she's a beaut. It does look like something that Moira would wear as, a, as jewelry. <laughs> sure. Yes, very grateful you were here to do this. Thank Thanks, you. Amy. Wow. My pleasure. My pleasure, Catherine. Amazing. I can't believe they got you to do this. Yeah. I um, I realize now I really should have asked uh, <laughs> asked for a lot more. I should, all I'm getting is these tulips. That's I it. know. And you can't take them home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just snorted. <laughs> Later in the show, Paramount Plus will be presenting the Academy's Humanitarian Award to Ryan Reynolds. And not just for generously providing huge savings for wireless service with unlimited talk and text on one of America's largest 5G networks. Terms and conditions apply, such as not available in Canada. But first, here are a few winning moments from Canadian Screen Week's Comedy and Drama Awards show. That's right, we're going straight to the good stuff. That's the Sam B. Guarantee. Uh, I have four hours away from my family, which means the party has to start now. <laughs> Two years ago, I was sitting in a hotel room in Ottawa watching this award ceremony on Zoom in my underwear. There's a lot of great comedy going on in Canada, and it's so great to check out this show that is uh, so smart, and the things they care about are on screen. Ryan Reynolds was here. Like, that's crazy. And the Canadian Screen Award goes to... The Porter. The Porter. The Porter. Uh, the Porter. The Porter, episode 104. You know, we made this show in a time that we desperately needed to reclaim the narrative, to be the heroes of our stories and not the victims, and to show our lives. I, I think it's so important, um, perhaps now more than ever, to tell stories of queer joy. And to all the trans and non-binary people in the room tonight, I love you, I'm so glad that you exist. Nothing bad or wrong can come from when we open ourselves up and let more people in. That's how you do it! Do it, baby! Yeah. Do it, baby, we did it! Lou! Uh, Lou is a virtual reality experience that uh, lets you experience the sensitivity on, of an autistic children. So we are very happy to have it during the Autism Month. I just wanted to um, dedicate this award to all the Indigenous children who were stolen from our families. Buffy St. Marie was adopted out. I was also adopted out as part of the 60s scoop, so this is for them. The advocacy, the activism, the pursuit of justice and equity is part of the job for all of us Indigenous creators every single day. The Earl Grey Award, a Lifetime Achievement Award for acting in television. It's been a long road and a bumpy one with lots of hills to climb and most of us in this industry know that. But I promise you, I do not regret one mile of that road. with the awkward, the silly, the insane, and you help us navigate being imperfectly and completely human. Thank you so much. No matter what you find yourself doing in life, <laughs> my wish for you is for you too to find yourself surrounded by good people with whom you share love and respect and lots of laughs. Ryan, you have changed lives. Because you've made these children feel seen, feel loved, feel special. Through simple, honest compassion and kindness. Thank you for caring for kids like me. Congratulations, come on up, Ryan. For me, Filtering my perspective and my energy through a prism of empathy and service has made my life better. And it's generally helped guide me away from being chewed up and shot out the of show business. Shout out to all our fellow nominees. We love you. This should be called the Porter's Screen Awards. We're out! I want to thank you and you and you and you and especially you. 
documentary films come in so many different forms, from serial killers who pick up hitchhikers to serial killers who eat their victims to just your standard serial killer next door. But here's a little known fact. There are documentaries that aren't about serial killers. They're about everyday heroes, like an Indian farmer, an indigenous tattoo artist, or that other dildo lady on that other sex show. Wow, Canadians really love dildos. We even have a town named after one. It's called Dildo. Anyways, that largely non-dildo tradition of Canadian documentaries celebrating everyday heroes continues tonight. Tonight, we celebrate the role documentaries can play in telling the stories of everyday heroes, a role that has become especially urgent in a time when it's not always easy to decipher what is real, what is authentic, and what is fact. When we were making our film, Navalny, we knew that if we told the story right, people would watch the film and think about Alexei Navalny, not just for the next day or week, but for the rest of their lives. And that's the power of documentary cinema. Over the past year, Canadian documentary filmmakers scoured the globe to bring light to stories of ordinary people doing extraordinary things. These films are one way to put their names in the global consciousness so that the world knows about them and does not forget them. Without these films, we might not know about Maria, a brave Syrian migrant worker living through revolution, civil war, and terror, all the while putting her family above all else. <laughs> We might not know about filmmaker Martin Duckworth's most important work, caring for his wife, Audrey Shermer, through the final stages of Alzheimer's. We might not have known about the Nautic Streetball crew and their battle for self-expression and the indelible imprint they left on the game. I put a lot of work. I feel like I could be, come, be something great. We might not know what it means to be a father whose courageous fight to find justice for his young daughter becomes a symbol of hope for survivors of sexual violence. We may have been unaware of the battle fought by Andrea Constant, the only one of more than 60 women who publicly accused Bill Cosby of sexual assault and won a conviction. When I put my foot in that courtroom, I was completely overwhelmed, scared, really scared. We might never have learned how Indigenous people around the globe practice the ancient art of tattooing as a means of connecting with nature, their ancestors, and the spiritual world. We may never have heard about an aid vehicle in Port-au-Prince that became a space for Haitians to have unflinching conversations about the promises of an international community that were made but never kept. Le patriarcat intransigeant qui 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 me dit qui traverse toute instance presque. And we might not have been reminded of the life and career of a radically progressive sex educator who helped change the conversation around sexuality. I had the gift of the gab. You will have a key word so that when she says this word you know that's it, it's over, it's finished, it's done with. These films, many of which are recognized in the 2023 Ted Rogers Best Feature Length Documentary category, and so many others, allowed us to walk in somebody else's shoes. A journey of empathy that we might never have taken otherwise. It's films like these that are the reason I was inspired to become a filmmaker. and we need them now more than ever. What I like most about acting is the collaboration and being creative with other people. And I'll help you with mom. And I'll tell her how sorry you are and how it seems like you've really changed. Yada, yada. I was a really shy kid, and when I got into acting and, and acting school, it kind of brought me out of my shell a little bit, finding yourself through these characters or being less shy through these, these characters. I kind of felt 
pulled to the film industry, either writing or acting, and then I just pulled to it in a weird way that I can't explain. I was there for like four and a half months in Sicily and then a month in Rome. And Portia. Albie. Hey. Hey. Obviously life-changing, like life-affirming. I felt nostalgic while I was going through it for my present self. It's a normal male fantasy. No. Movies like that socialize men into having that fantasy. Yeah, I fell in love with it. Canadian Screen Week this year was packed with events and celebrations, and none of them ran up a bigger bar tab than the Lifestyle and Reality Awards. Seriously, those Canada's drag race people can party. Woo! Next time, think about inviting me. I'm available. I love to party. Anyway, here are a few highlights. And the Canadian Screen Award goes to... CBC News Morning live with Heather Hiscox. Okay, so first things first, I have to thank these wonderful women next to me because you're amazing. Eta. <laughs> we want to see a state word! What? There is only one, Tracy Moore. I am honored to present you with the 2023 Changemaker Award. Change making comes in many forms. It can be having the tough conversations that make people uncomfortable on air. It can be putting folks on camera who don't usually have their voices heard. And the Canadian Screen Award goes to Canada's Drag Race, Brooklyn Heights, Brad Goreski, Tracy Melchor. Right now we need the magic of drag more than ever. We won! <laughs> We didn't. Well, this is embarrassing. <laughs> what did we win for this time? I see so many of my fellow journalists and colleagues in the room tonight, and I really want to thank all of you for the love and support I have felt from you over these last few months. The Amazing Race Canada! It's really exciting to get the show back on the road after COVID, so thank you for supporting us once again. I'm now re retired. Somebody told me a few weeks ago, Pierre, on air or off air, we can always be a model, a mentor. And I think it's the greatest honor that we can receive. And the Canadian Screen Award goes to Mary makes it easy. <laughs> And I was cheesy, but you make my job easy. Um, I hope everybody gets the experience to work with people. Just so amazing. And um, I'm so proud of our little weird show, baby. <laughs> Tom Power. I bought these pants this morning, so I'm terrified they're going to fall down. Not only did we have BIPOC representation in front and behind the camera, we had senior producers that were BIPOC. We had queer people that we're BIPOC. We have the right to be seen and heard, and representation matters. When we see ourselves, we literally can change the world. And thank you to the cast for bringing your authentic selves to the screen. That's crazy, that's crazy, that's crazy. Hi everyone, my name is Madison Tevlin, coming from the red carpet at the CSAs. What made your show so special? Every week you wake up and it's a brand new show. I guess the whole team like working together and it's... I think because we have a, a, a really big smart dog. The dog. He's the best actor on the show because he always knows his lines. What do you love about your job? Well, that list is too long. Every day I get to be someone new or different. Using my experience to fuel the character I, I have at hand. Can you describe yourself in three words? Weird in a good way, shiny, and inquisitive. I'm a hardworking mom. Um, not very cool. So if you had to choose one part of your character that's the same as you, what would you choose? The singing voice, for sure. I'm sassy and sarcastic, exactly like my character. Totally. Right? 
If you had one positive message to share with the world, what would it be? That's tough. Why am I having trouble thinking of something positive to share with the world? Oh, never let anyone tell you no or put you down. Your weirdness is wonderful and to celebrate it. Your body is the least interesting thing about you and it's important to say yes to things that scare you. Aside from me, is there anyone you're excited to meet? <laughs> um, honestly, you were it. Yeah. I might go home now. Well, I hear a rumor Ryan Reynolds is coming. Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> I would love to meet Ryan Reynolds. How is this award so special to you? Well, it's special to me because it, I think it amplifies so many of these organizations that I've been lucky enough to, to spend time with and work with, people that have grown me. Anything you want to ask me? <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God. We're done! Now you need to go home. Come on, yeah. Go yeah. Feet up. Hang out. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Well, pitter patter, let's get at her. Canadians. The fastest rising stars in comedy. I am comedy struck and starstruck. Telling Canadian stories for real people. Incredible. You're the first female to direct a Pixar movie. The first Muslim superhero. The first project with all Indigenous creatives at the helm. And the award goes to... We are a country of accomplishments. The impact that Canadians can make on the entire world. Like, it is awesome. The Radius Award, presented by Made New, highlights the work of a Canadian media professional who's making a big impact in the global entertainment industry. And our recipient was doing that well before he became a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This year's Radius Award goes to Simu Liu. Simu's story, the legend of Simu Liu. Harbin, China, his destiny begins with the birth of a boy named Simu. He's a curious child energetic, imaginative. Fate lay across the ocean on foreign shores. This wasn't quite the destiny he hoped for. His destiny called for a change to the stage, the screen, and the runway. Not a bad way to prepare for a big break on national television. A hit, a revolutionary show, but little does he know, destiny is just getting started. A random call blows destiny up across multiple dimensions. His life would never be the same, and neither would the universe. The Marvel Universe, that is. $430 million box office and the largest opening for a Labor Day weekend? Not bad, Simu, not bad. And it's for all this and more that Simu Liu is the 2023 Radius Award winner. Everything okay, Chopa? She's just stirring a little bit. Hey, girl. I've had, a, I've had a pretty sweet few years where I've had a lot of incredible opportunities uh, afforded to me. I've hosted SNL, I won Jeopardy. Me and my four friends, uh, my four best friends won Family Feud, which is pretty awesome. Let's see, what's, what's left, what's next? Um, you mean this isn't a three hour long special? <laughs> oh. Should be. <laughs> My experience with Kim's Convenience is that it got me out of credit card debt. So I feel like that's that's very important. Um, you know, we were the first kind of Canadian primetime sitcom featuring an Asian Canadian family. This was a show that was extremely formative to my trajectory and my, my career. There was something really special about that show and I'm just so grateful every day to, to have had the privilege to go to work with such amazing individuals. Paul Sun Hyun Lee, who, who just really taught me what was asked and required of a number one on the call sheet to have Andrew Fung, uh, my kimchi, my best friend, Nicole, Andrea, uh, Jean, you know, it, it was nothing of a privilege. And I think it's a testament to just how rare and unique of an experience we had. The number one thing that I'm most recognized for, yes, even more than being a superhero, is being Jung Kim from Kim's Convenience. Being the first lead Asian superhero in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I think is a sign that, you know, we are making progress as a society. Um, we are becoming aware of, you know, the different types of people that ex exist in this world. We are taking steps to give each and every person and every community a chance to feel represented and seen. And um, it's, it's an incredible honor to have been a part of that. It is wild seeing your face on a poster and as an action figure in a way that you never would have possibly imagined growing up. 
it's truly, truly an, an honor and, um, and a privilege. An incredible feeling knowing that the work that you have done is being uh, watched, is, is affecting people, is being uh, recognized and celebrated. I find some of the other parts of the fame thing to be a little uh, difficult to struggle with sometimes. The hardest part of it is, you know, reading something online that's, that's not true and being powerless to kind of correct or to contextualize. It, it's hard because you feel like you are so known and yet so few people truly know you. You know, at the end of the day, I think um, what has really helped me is maintaining a singular focus on what am I here to do? A lot of these accomplishments have been very me-centric. I really want to focus on, on this next leg of my career on making sure I'm also uplifting other people and other creatives and the end goal of, of you know, the whole diversity conversation is not just telling my story but also being open to hearing others and helping champion theirs and whether that's as a, as a producer or an, as a writer or some, you know, a filmmaker, um, I, I'd love to just be able to champion those things and, and take the focus off of just me. It's important to be recognized for your work, particularly if you belong to a community that is historically underrepresented. That means that every time you take a podium and you and you have the spotlight on you and you're are, you know being able to be recognized and celebrated for what you do means that somebody watching on a TV screen or sitting in the audience somewhere is seeing something a little bit different than they have before. And that's meaningful, that's powerful. Coming up, we'll be presenting the Kojigo Fund Audience Choice Award to a winner chosen by you, the fans, instead of how the winner is normally chosen by our sovereign, King Charles III's daughter-in-law's Ouija board. Look, man, I don't make the rules. Plus, Ryan Reynolds will accept the Humanitarian Award presented by Paramount Plus for his dedication to philanthropy and for spreading joy around the world with his humanitarian gin. Un homme d'âge moyen essayant de faire amende honorable pour sa misogynie passée. Deux frères vivant leur passage à l'âge adulte dans un complexe d'habitation à loyer abordable à Toronto. Un garçon et une fille formant un lien singulier lors de vacances d'été au Québec. Une mère célibataire coréenne luttant pour élever son fils dans une banlieue canadienne. Un jeune athlète et son entraîneur forgeant une relation à Téhéran. Une équipe de recherche comportementale reproduisant les expériences du premier voyage en équipage vers Mars. Les décors et les histoires des films nommés dans la catégorie « Meilleur film » sont presque aussi diversifiés que le pays lui-même. Pourtant, chacun est imprégné d'un ingrédient spécifique, immatériel, qui le rend uniquement canadien. In Canadian films, so much of the conflict is internal. The fact that filmmakers here can push boundaries, they can explore things that sometimes commercial cinema doesn't allow. Films have this beautiful ability to give you the words that you're looking for. Film is really powerful. Each province and each area and each group of people in Canada are really, really distinct. I think it's important to tell immigrant stories. And it's a reflection of the country. And I think it's truthful. And it's honest. It's interesting, for instance, that you have Clement Virgo making Brother this year and Anthony Shim making Rice Boy Sleeps. These are two different generations. Both set in the 90s, both coming of age stories about first and second gen immigrant families. What's he eating? What is it? it smells like fart. Gross. What stood out for me was Brother. That was one of my favorite ones. It's from Scarborough, these vast expanses of wide streets and lonely bus stops. <laughs> I remember I stood at the side of the road waiting for a bus in the winter. She relies on you. Come on, my club. I'm not gonna abandon her. Charlotte LeBaum making Falcon Lake. I put myself in that movie. Viking was pretty good. Lost in space, but not really in space. I'm not gonna give any spoilers. I hope it's not controversial to say that when it comes to cinema, Quebec is a different country. The history, the culture, the influences, the production environment are all very different. They know how to play with dark humor in a way that gives you that, just that deep belly laugh. Just nothing like it. 
But I think there is something unsettling sometimes about Canadian filmmaking that is different. It's not provocative to shock, but it's something that gets under your skins when it's working at its best. I look at the art being made, and it's unfiltered. Every single one of these films delivered something so unique. It's important to have representation in film because then it gives a voice to people who are used to not being heard. We have all of this freedom of opportunity to tell really bold and engaging stories about everyday experiences that can feel monumental to us as they all do in our lives. We have talented actors out there and we want to portray our art and I think that's why we have to celebrate us. We are all together, we're family. It's so cool to be Canadian. We have to champion each other. There is power in numbers. I know, Anne with an E. Cancellations are so tough. I understand. I was canceled too. But you know what? There are plenty of opportunities out there for people with those weird flat hats. Have you thought about a podcast? They're very hot right now. I'm just saying the business is changing. And speaking of change, the Changemaker Award recognizes someone in the Canadian media community who's using their voice to call out systemic racism, to amplify those actively engaged in anti-racist work, and to challenge the structural inequality at the core of media organizations in Canada. This year's recipient has always stood up for those fighting adversity, especially kids. The Changemaker Award this year goes to Tracy Moore. Like, I can't believe it's you and me sitting here to have this conversation. It makes me so happy. Oh, you're so excited today. Who did you come to see? <laughs> we all have to take responsibility for moving forward in a way that is inclusive, and you can be marginalized and still have privilege. So use that privilege. That's what we all have to do. This is the work that I've always felt was the reason why I even got into broadcast. If I can, in my little small corner of the world, try and make things better, I think we all have a responsibility to do that. This is what I'm here to do. So I'm happy it's, if it's working, then I'm doing the job that I'm supposed to be doing. So thank you so much. I couldn't imagine a more deserving person for not just this accolade, but all the accolades. What does getting, earning this Changemaker Award represent to you? I want to so badly say that I don't rely on external validation, but oh my goodness, this award, it's, it's probably the one that means the most to me. I'm excited. I couldn't wait to tell my parents. I couldn't wait to tell my husband. So it means the world to me because it's about the work I care about the most. When I say my work, I mean sort of lifting marginalized communities. That's what I've always been about. Now we had an ability to speak about this publicly. How are we gonna do this in a way that doesn't alienate all of our viewers? How are we gonna do this in a way that actually gives justice to these nuanced issues? My parents being like, wow, you're really getting into it. I'm like, yeah, I really am. How, how do you feel about that, Trace? Like, you okay? And I'm like, I don't know, but we have a moment. Tracy, what have you learned about yourself uh, through this process of becoming a very public version of the activist you always were? It's been a journey, for sure. It's always heavy because I'm talking about my actual life. I'm talking about my actual kids on their actual playground being called the actual N-bomb. It's never light. So it was exciting, it was draining, it was anxiety inducing, it was terrifying, it was liberating. It was amazing to have the opportunity to speak about these things, but it was also incredibly isolating. Your family helped cultivate who you are. Marjorie and Leonard Moore. Marjorie and Leonard Moore, baby. The OGs. Yes. Marjorie and Leonard Moore, my parents, came to this country late 60s, early 70s. They came here, they faced racism and discrimination, but they were also so excited. They put their heads down and they did the work. They have this just live mentality that has really been passed down to me. They really taught me that it's actually not that bad. 
like life is pretty good. So what can you do to make this moment special in light of, you know, the crap storm that might be happening around you? That ability to just look at the good and try and figure it out and bring people together and love people and love life. And, um, <laughs> I didn't want to get choked up. There, there's nothing they wouldn't do for their children. It pours so much into you, and that's why I have so much to pour into everyone else. You've, you've had a lot poured into your cup, and therefore you have so much to pour into others, and that, that's exactly, that's the best way I could describe Tracy Moore to anybody who asks now. Now and forever, that's gonna be how I describe you. <laughs> that's Marjorie and Leonard Moore. <laughs> what do you think about when you're like, okay, I did that? Damn, I did that. I think that the work that I've done with organizations like Trust 15, which is a program in Raxdale that feeds and mentors students in the Raxdale area, it makes me proud. But I am so proud that I still believe that I can help in my way. That's a beautiful thing. And I do think it's contagious and you do have it and you do share it everywhere you go. Thank you. We can, we can do something. Because otherwise, what do we have? Hopelessness, right? We gotta do something. There's just one more thing we have for you, okay? Okay. Honestly, you have always been such an inspiration and what you do on TV, what you do in your personal life shows your selflessness and it shows how genuine and loving you truly are as a person. So I thank you, Tracy, for the friendship. I will always love you and I will always care for you. Thank you. Mm? Oh thank my gosh. Mm? <laughs> this Our final look back at Canadian Screen Week includes highlights from the Awards for Cinematic Arts, also known as movies or if you're a teenager, super long Insta Reels. Enjoy a few of our favorite moments. Let's just keep on telling stories that are inclusive, are about representation, and championing that and celebrating that, celebrating the nuances of these experiences. Thank you. But then there are masters, and these masters read your script and say, you should not make this movie. Thank you to all the people who helped me create the movie and to you, Sylvain, <laughs> reading this right now. This film has made a lot of love. I wanted to humanize my people and, you know, representation matters. It really, truly does because I couldn't see myself on screen for the longest time and it's hard to, to feel like you belong when you don't see yourself, when you don't feel like you're part of the community that you're supposed to be part of, you know. If you paid your taxes in the last six years, and you know who you are. You helped make this film. This marks the first time the Golden Screen Award has been won for a film directed and written by women. 23 December is the first film we released. So you can imagine how excited we are to receive this prize tonight. This year, we lost one of the giants of Canadian and East Coast cinema and television, producer Paul Pope. You'd be hard pressed to find anyone in the Newfoundland industry who didn't get their start or have their career elevated by Paul. And you'll always be with us, Paul. We love you and miss you so much. Clement Virgo, brother. David Terriani, thank you so much for um, writing such a beautiful novel. Um, Damon, Eskla, Sonia, thank you again. My wife. Uh, Canadian Screen Award goes to Lamar Johnson, brother. I hope that black and brown kids from Scarborough can watch this film and see themselves. There are so many parallels in this story. Me being from Scarborough, first generation Canadian, to a Jamaican parent. Um, I'm so very proud of this, and I'm proud of us and what we created. Thank you. This is for Scarborough. Thank you, thank you. Are you signing this report? Oh. Okay. What a night. What a night. <laughs> and the Canadian Screen Award goes to Brother. Coming here tonight 
We want to dedicate this award to the next generation of filmmakers in Scarborough, in Burnaby, in Côte de Neige, in North Preston, who may not yet know that they are filmmakers and encourage them to dream big dreams. Thank you. When I was a young comedy fan growing up in Toronto, the Canadian comedians that I looked up to were Tom Green, uh, the Kids in the Hall, the cast of SCTV. But then you get older. You grow up, you develop a sense of your true identity, and your tastes evolve. And now I'm obsessed with um, like Tom Green, the Kids in the Hall, uh, the cast of SCTV. They're uh, all the same people. I haven't evolved. Um, very much at all, but I am really excited about the new wave of Canadian comedy and the way it's opening up in terms of inclusion and representation. Some of these new comedians are like a revelation for people who previously kind of felt invisible in comedy. They're drawing on their own experiences to call out cynicism and hypocrisy, and the visibility is so important. These new Canadian comedians are like the counter argument to all this noise and misinformation they're intelligent, compelling, human, and above all else, crucially, hysterically funny. Let me explain comedy to you. When I think of Canadian comedy, I think of warmth. Wow! I see where somebody gets their good looks. People outside of Canada, they have an idea or, you know, maybe like a stereotype of what Canadians are like. It's not just one singular type of Canadian. Right away, it's like Jim Carrey, Mike Myers, Second City, Catherine O'Hara. Smart, subtle, self-deprecating. Oh, darts I smoked and hearts I broke. Canadians are funny because we all have this collective traumatic experience with the weather. We have to find other ways to find some sort of joy. We've always been funny. Canadians have always known that. We're becoming unflinching in our abilities to tell stories. One, two, three, Santa Claus Lane. I'm gonna need to confiscate these. And the networks are being brave enough to pick up those stories and, and showcase them. I feel like I'm actually making choices, that's who I am. But the whole reason my dad's coming home is because he's freaked about me and that's gonna like mess with my new vibe. It's a wild time right now. Sort of, I think is blazing a brand new path for comedy in Canada. Fakes, Letter Kenny. Astrid and Lily is so funny. Children ruin everything. CTV loved it so much that they actually gave up one of their 19 Big Bang Theory time slots to give it a go. <laughs> Canadian comedy is the love child of American comedy sensibilities and British comedy sensibilities. I think the future of Canadian comedy is going to be extremely diverse. Probably just sleep in, catch up on reality shows. Cooper, I swear to Christ, slow the F down! There's just incredible, hilarious Canadians, specifically ladies coming out right now. These new, young, fresh voices in Canadian comedy are telling real stories. They're so unafraid to be totally honest. Are you talking to yourself? No. I'm obviously talking to this. I think Andrew Fung with Run the Burbs. Is this a street race? He's had two incredible, successful shows. The moments where I see on screen, I relate to that so hard. I can't help but laugh. I got a dare for you. That's really funny to me. Canadian comedy is evolving in the same way that all comedy is evolving. It's trying to stay funny and trying not to hurt people, which is actually something that I think Canadians do really well. Do you drink a glass of wine or two with dinner? Maybe just on the weekends. I mean, I'm not like, sure. Not even. Always with Always food. with food. A lot of, yeah. I mean, we try to balance, so it's, yeah. In this day and age, we don't have to leave our home to go be accepted as funny somewhere else. We're opening our own eyes to the talent we have here, the homegrown talent. It just sounds quite grand, doesn't it? Like 19 nominations. It's, it feels as though people got it. Porter is a series about, if it's in the 1920s, about the porters of the railroad and they're lifting up the black community bit in a particular time. It is a powerful show, it's snazzy, it's sexy, it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's important Canadian history and black history and world history. Well, I think it's an important story because 
It's the first time we've seen black Canadian history represented in this way with so much nuance and complexity and such a diverse group of characters. And I think for a lot of people, like of many generations, it's not only educational, but just inspiring. Especially it was shot during COVID. And so there was this kind of intense quickening of like friendship and, and yeah. camaraderie that had to happen because all we had was each other in that in that particular moment, you know? Like, it's really punched above its weight, and I'm very proud of um, the storytellers. I feel really proud to be part of something that's raising the ceiling for what we can expect, not only from creatives in Canada, but from black creatives. And I think that no matter what happens in the long run with the legacy of this show, we've created space. And we've also been part of history, both on and off camera, for for you know, our elders and our ancestors being able to represent them and have their stories told in this way at such a high level is just extraordinary. But a bing. Boom. Boom. Everyone who works in television wants one thing, for the audience to let us know that we made something great, that our career choice wasn't a huge mistake, and that we're not the worthless pieces of trash our parents worried we would become. <gasps> Look, Mom, I won! I didn't. And what makes the Kojiko Fund Audience Choice Award so special is that nominees were chosen by you, the fans. Here are your nominees. Happened. Evan is what happened. Don't worry about that now. Just go on. Keep going. You sure you're okay? I'm sure. Just a little embarrassed, if anything. I'm the one that's supposed to be looking after you. Ben Halen. I hear he is very good. And the winner of the Kojiko Fund Audience Choice Award is Hudson and Rex. Everybody, thank you so much. Okay, no, you keep going. You done? So we. Now the diesel said his piece. I just want to say thank you, Canada, for choosing for choosing us as your audience choice award winners for 2023. Thank you, everybody. Oh God, what did you eat before this? Ryan Reynolds is an actor, writer, producer, philanthropist, and co-owner of a Welsh soccer club for some reason. But no matter what, he always stays true to that singular Canadian value that forms the core of each of our identities, not being a total jagoff, which is amazing since he spends so much time in Hollywood. That's why this year's Humanitarian Award, presented by Paramount Plus, goes to Ryan Reynolds. Right, and there it is. Ryan Reynolds, take one. I feel like I'm about to get roasted. Maybe. I don't know. Tens of thousands of Ukrainians are racing to escape. Water is life, and yet access to safe drinking water remains out of reach for many Indigenous people in Canada. Food bank usage has rose to its highest levels in Canadian history. I think of you know, sharing as an investment. They're all just investments. 
and might not necessarily return dollars to you, but they'll they'll make the world a better place, they'll make Canada a better place. Mr. Reynolds, I feel like after meeting three times, we're on a first name basis now, so hey Ryan. Hey Ryan. Hey Ryan. I thought it'd be appropriate to tell a story about how you've impacted my life. I am a part of Water First organization, which you kindly donated to. I just wanted to say you're phenomenal for all that you do. I was in the hospital and I was having a rough time. And I was in there for my birthday and I missed the release of one of your movies. Somehow you managed to get a screening inside the hospital. Being able to know that my goals are possible through admiring and watching you. I mean, it was incredible. It was one of the greatest moments of my life. I would like to say thank you on everyone on their behalf. Thank you so much for your kindness. Helping not only just me find what I want to do in life, but also tons of others. You made dreams possible. Oh, that was not the verbal messy stabbing death I was expecting. That was uh, just a relentless torrent of kindness. Um, wow. Yeah, that was really moving. The feeling I have in anticipation of receiving this award is, is you know, a little uh, deflective, I think. <laughs> you know, I sort of, you know, I think that's probably where I'm maybe most Canadian when it comes to um, awards. To a certain degree, I guess it centers me. It, uh, can also center a lot of the uh, causes and issues that I'm pretty passionate about and organizations that are making Canada a better place. That intersection of hard work and luck and all those other things that lead to here, I'm really grateful for that. I learned pretty early on I don't like, I've never enjoyed in any project or any property, be it Deadpool or Free Guy. I don't enjoy laughing at other people, I enjoy laughing at myself. So a lot of my creativity comes from just kind of playing with my own image or my own idea of what I am and um, disassembling it and, you know, regarding it for the show that it is. You know, having a, a creative pursuit or a creative job, it's an intensely fortunate position to be in. You know, working in philanthropic endeavors, they, they are equally creative. Every year, one of my favorite things to do is to get ready for the Sick Kids Foundation campaign. These are creative exercises. We get to do really fun things with people that I admire and love, not just the doctors, nurses, and support staff that work at these incredible hospitals, but I get to co-op some of my showbiz pals and put them to work. Each one of these organizations, Water First NGOs, Sick Kids Foundation, Covenant House, Food Banks Canada, these are just, I mean, some of the most wonderful, compassionate people that are truly like the day in and day out heroes. I think some of the emphasis is placed on me giving them something, but all of these organizations, particularly organizations that center around indigenous rights in Canada, these organizations that I really, really wanna see grow. My job is to amplify something that is already quite perfect and these organizations are just that. They're made up of people who are beyond brilliant, courageous and genuinely selfless count them as colleagues, but also to count them as friends for me, as I think is an incredible uh, privilege. I have four healthy kids. I'm grateful to be in a rock solid relationship. Giving back is a, you know, that, that's, that, is, the, that is me meeting the absolute bare minimum requirement of uh, being a person on, <laughs> on this earth, I think. Uh, uh, it, it, it feels awesome, you know, and, and it's something I hope I get to keep doing for the rest of my life. Words are too clumsy to express how grateful I am to work with so many of these organizations. And um, it, it, at, at some point, I hope to uh, pay it forward to them for what they've given me, too. I've been lucky to you know, pair up with some pretty awesome uh, folks up in my uh, home in the Great White North. Did you watch the E.T. Canada's Queen Elizabeth tribute? I was sobbing. I mean, I'm super psyched for a new monarch, though, right? Oh, sorry, just catching up with my unquestionably Canadian friends. Well, congratulations again to all of the 2023 Canadian Screen Award winners, and thanks to you for tuning in from all across Canada, which is where I currently am. Good night, everyone. I'm sorry, what? You want me to incorporate a last minute paid sponsorship into the script? No, how am I supposed to do that? The show's over. I especially want to thank tonight's partner, Bullfrog Power, for their generous contributions and for Bullfrog powering the Canadian Screen Awards with 100% green electricity. Good night, everyone. That's gonna sound ridiculous. Sorry, we're still rolling.
I'm Andrew Chang, the host of a new show on a new channel. The channel is CBC News Explore, and that's what we do here. We explore the news. That is actually happening in a way. Brazil spent the second most. New ideas with a twist. We dig deep into the stories, we slow things down, and we figure it out together. Tell me about his potential opponents. You can get it 24 hours a day, and it's free. What does that have to do with FTX and what the... CBC News Explore. Available free.